welcome back to Simply Women's Health with CJ. Today we're going to talk about the seventh month of pregnancy, focusing specifically on weeks 28 through 32. This is it. You're in your last trimester, and quite frankly, you can actually see the end from here. Now that you're in your third trimester, there's some stuff that's slightly different. At this point, we want for you to check in with your baby every single day and do what's called fetal kick counts or monitor fetal movement. At the 28-week visit, your provider will probably give you some information on how they would like for you to keep track of your baby's movement. I recommend you just follow whatever instructions they give you. You are going to have cramping. You're going to have twinges. You're going to have round ligament pain. Those stretching pains that happen every time you sneeze, you laugh, you cough, you roll over in bed, you bend over to try your shoes, you can get a pulling sensation down deep in your pelvis and it can take your breath away. It's perfectly normal. What's not okay at this point? Bright red bleeding that's enough to saturate a pad. Now, if you have intercourse and you have a little bit of spotting afterwards, that's nothing to be terribly concerned about. If you have bleeding that's enough to saturate a pad, however, that's different. If you have water running down your leg that isn't urine. At this point in pregnancy, if you have not already sneezed and tinkled, seriously, it's just a matter of time. It's not okay for your baby to not move like he or she normally does, and it's not okay for you to have five or more cramps in one hour. All of those things are signs of preterm labor, and you would want to contact your healthcare provider. We're also in the third trimester on the lookout for preeclampsia. It's a condition that happens in 4% of pregnancies. Women with preeclampsia have very high blood pressure. Now, when you are at your OB visit and your blood pressure is normal, at this point, we probably don't have anything to worry about. That being said, you are not monitoring your blood pressure all day, every day. Preeclampsia can come on quickly and it can go south very quickly. How would you know you might have preeclampsia? You have the worst headache of your life. It won't go away no matter what you do. You have changes in your vision, black spots, flashing lights, tunnel vision, that occur at rest. You bend over, you tie your shoe, you get back up, you get shooting stars that go away in a few minutes. Those are normal pressure changes in your head. You're just sitting there watching TV, minding your own business, and you start seeing black spots or halos around lights. Now you have our attention. If you're having burning behind your right breast, normal heartburn is up here where your esophagus is. You should not ever have heartburn in your liver. That's what's behind that right breast. Again, if you're having any of those symptoms, you probably want to contact your healthcare provider. So when you come in for your OB visit at 28 weeks, you're going to want to get your weight. At this point, we recommend somewhere between a half a pound and a pound of weight gain every single week. You're going to want to get your blood pressure. Again, we are really on the lookout now for preeclampsia. If you have more questions about preeclampsia, please check out my video entitled Hypertension in Pregnancy. They're going to want to measure your tummy. They are going to use a tape measure that measures in centimeters. They measure from the top of your pubic bone to the top of your uterus. Your centimeters should match your weeks plus or minus two. They're going to want to listen to your baby's heartbeat with a Doppler that looks like this. Something like this. They're going to want to talk to you about the Tdap. Tetanus, diphtheria, and pertussis is a vaccination we recommend to all pregnant women. The vaccine is not for you. It is for your baby. Again, if you have questions regarding vaccine, I go into a lot further detail in my vaccinations and pregnancy video. Check that out. They're going to want to order some lab work. They're probably going to want to make sure you're not anemic. They're probably going to want to make sure you don't have any sexually transmitted diseases, depending on what your state requirements are. They're going to want to make sure that you are not a diabetic that is specific to pregnancy. That is done with what's called a glucose tolerance test. If your blood type is RH negative, they will do some extra lab work and they will probably order a, you to have a shot called Rogam. That's a medication that we give to patients who are RH negative to protect their babies. Keep a journal. At this point, it's good for you to write down your questions as you think of them. It never fails that you come in, you have your visits, they go over a lot of information, and you get done, and you completely forget to ask those questions that you had thought about in between visits. So things for you to start to think about at this point. 
How do you plan to feed your baby? Are you going to breastfeed? And if so, is there a class that you can take that can answer any questions you have about breastfeeding? If you have a little boy, are you going to have him circumcised? How do you want for your labor and delivery to look? Are you able to attend any kind of childbirth education or prenatal classes? Are you going to be taking time off from work? What is your employer's policy regarding maternity leave? Do you need to do FMLA paperwork? What do you plan to do for birth control after this baby gets here? At this point, we are probably going to see you every two to four weeks, depending on what's going on with your pregnancy and what your provider preference is. Hi, if you're still here, thanks so much for sticking around through the entire video. If you feel as though this information has been helpful to you, or you think you know somebody that might benefit from the uh, information provided in these videos, please feel free to like it, share it, uh, and if you haven't already subscribed, I would love it if you did that. Any and all support that you can provide is so greatly appreciated. As always, these videos were not created uh, as, a, as a replacement for a visit, uh, visit with your healthcare provider, rather as a place for you to come for basic, reliable information that is non-biased and hopefully allow you to figure out what questions to ask your healthcare provider at your next visit to best meet your healthcare needs. Again, I appreciate all of your support. If you want to contact me, my information is at the top of this screen, and I will put it in the comment section of this video. That's all I have for today. This is CJ. I'm at your cervix.